Good evening and welcome. What a joy it is to be able to welcome you all into uh, our parish here at St. Barbara. It is truly a remarkable experience to be able to pray together with the uh, various uh, places of worship in the town of Orange each and every year around the great feast of Thanksgiving and offer up the glory to God. Um, I know that I speak on behalf of uh, our fellow parishioners that it is our joy to uh, greet you, to welcome you, and um, let us pray. Thanksgiving Day, 1789, a proclamation by the President of the newly formed United States of America. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor, and whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November, next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence, which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war. For the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have since enjoyed. For the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations, and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions, to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and the increase of science among them and us, and, in, and generally, to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best, given under my hand, at the city of New York, the third day of October, in the year of our Lord, 1789, signed George Washington, President of the United States of America. Please stand. <clears throat> Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, and unto the ages of ages.
Let us pray to the Lord. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our country, our president, all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the town of Orange, for every city and country, for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the mercy, life, health, salvation, and protection of all those here present, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, captives, for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, an abundance of the fruits of the earth, temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all afflictions, wrath, danger, distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord, for to you belong all glory, honor, worship, now and forever and to the ages of ages.
reading is from the book of Proverbs. Praises follow the memory of the righteous, and the blessings of God are upon their heads. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who acquires understanding. For the gain from it is better than gain from silver. She is more precious than jewels. No evil can stand in front of her. She is well known to those who approach her. All that is precious cannot compare with her. Justice springs up from her mouth. Her tongue is clothed with the law of God and mercy. Wherefore, my children, listen. Noble things I shall speak. Happy is the man who watches my ways, for my exits lead to life. The favor of God waits for him there. Therefore to you, O man, I call, and my appeal is the sons of men. For I, wisdom, have reason as my abode. My base is knowledge and understanding. Mine are counsel and safety. Mine are reason and might. I love those who love me, and those who seek me will find grace. O simple ones, learn prudence, and you unlearned ones become reasonable. Listen to me, for noble things shall I speak, and right things will come from my lips. My mouth will utter truth, while lies are an abomination to my lips. All the words I speak are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They make all clear to him who understands and write to him who finds knowledge. For I teach thee the truth, that your hope may be in the Lord, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. And Jesus, seeing the multitudes, went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. say with our whole soul, with all our mind, let us say, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us
us again pray for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this town and our communities of faith, for all our fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters who are asleep here in the Lord, and for people everywhere. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us again pray for those who do charitable work, for those who serve, for those who labor, for those who teach, for those who sing, and for all the people here present who await your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we give glory, now and forever and to the ages of ages.
familiar to some of you, in the Christian tradition are typically a song expression of praise to God found in our liturgies, often in Eucharist. And they remind us not only on Thanksgiving, but every day that we are surrounded by God's blessings. The psalmist in Psalm 24 writes, The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. And in this great nation, we have certainly received much of God's blessing. In fact, some would say more than our fair share. And while it would seem obvious to most that we are indeed blessed, especially considering that in many places of the world, folks live on less than $2 a day. We often take for granted all that God has given us, even these little things. The great theologian Snoopy gives us some insights into this. <laughs> on Thanksgiving Day, Snoopy gets his usual dish of dog food, while observing that the rest of the family is surrounding the table and they're eating turkey with all the trimmings. And he thinks, how about that? Everyone's eating turkey today, but just because I'm a dog, I get dog food. But then he crawls to the top of his doghouse where he has one more insight. He says, it could have been worse. I could have been born a turkey. <laughs> well, as a child, on more than one occasion, I too had to be reminded that folks in other places certainly had it a whole lot worse than I did. Usually as I stared at an unappealing plate of nutritious, warm food that may not have been my favorite. Or I had to be reminded more than once to shut off the lights, that we had a clean, warm house or any house at all. And sometimes, as adults, we all have to be reminded from time to time of God's blessing. Hurricane Sandy certainly has brought that to light for me and for many. And I'm grateful to all of you in our community who reached out to neighbors and offered a warm meal, a respite from the cold, a place to plug in a phone or a computer, and while I am grateful for all these things, we often lose sight of the source from whom these blessings flow. And this isn't unique to us. Throughout history, God's people have had selective amnesia. After being delivered from the hand of Pharaoh from slavery in Egypt, God's people forgot the source of their deliverance and looked in other places. In the Christian Gospels, Luke writes of a group of ten lepers that were miraculously healed by Jesus of their disease. And only one returns to thank Jesus, while the rest resume their former lives. Only one of them turned back, praising God with a loud voice, so grateful that he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And Jesus responds by saying to him, your faith has made you well. And this encounter for me suggests that faith and gratitude are very closely related. And that faith without gratitude is maybe not faith at all. And that there's something life-giving about gratitude. Not all that long ago, an essay appeared on a website called WebMD Health with the topic, Boost Your Health with a Dose of Gratitude. The essay said that thousands of years of philosophic and religious teaching urging gratitude then cited evidence that grateful people, people for whom gratitude is a permanent trait, have a health edge on not so grateful people. It may be that if you're grateful for your life, you take better care of yourself. And there's also evidence that gratitude is a great stress reliever, that grateful people are generally more optimistic and hopeful, 
and that there are links between gratitude and the immune system. So your mother was probably right when she made you call your grandmother for those sweaters and thank her for the birthday card or insisted that you sit down and write thank you notes. Rabbi Harold Kushner, Rabbi Laureate of Temple Israel in Boston, a suburb of Natick, he speaks to this as well, commenting on a phrase in the 23rd Psalm, my cup runneth over. He says, gratitude is more than remembering to mumble thank you. It's more than ritual of politeness. Gratitude is a way of looking at the world that doesn't change the facts of your life. It has the power to make your life more enjoyable. And he illustrates the difference in this way. He says, each night as I prepare for bed, I put drops in my eyes to fend off the threat of glaucoma that would rob me of my sight and take from me the pleasure of reading. Each morning at breakfast, I take a pill to control my blood pressure. And each evening at dinner, I take another to control my cholesterol level. But instead of lamenting the ailments that come with growing older, instead of wishing I was as young and as fit as I once was, I take my medication with a prayer of thanks that modern science has found a way to help me cope with those ailments. And I think of all my ancestors who didn't live long enough to develop the complications of old age and did not have pills to take when they did. Friends, I believe being grateful and saying thank you are absolutely at the heart of God's hope and intent for each of us. In times of uncertainty, difficulty, and chaos, gratitude reroots us in God's blessing and allows us to be vessels of God's mercy and love to others. And when we are grateful for all that God has given us, we're able to open our hearts and make a difference in the world. And so this Thanksgiving, I invite you to take a moment before you sit down to watch the football games. Hopefully you won't be going shopping on Thanksgiving. Before you share your Thanksgiving meal with family and friends, to really claim what is at the core of this day and count your blessings. Remember people in your past and present. Parents, grandparents, teachers, coaches, friends, and others. All these saints who have made it possible for you to be able to enjoy this day. And then, Acknowledge from whom all of these people and these blessings flow. Gratitude is, after all, at the very heart of faith. Not as guilt, as we have sometimes been taught. Not obligation, as we occasionally conclude and teach. But gratitude, pure and simple. Gratitude because all of life, all of it, is a gift. So this Thanksgiving and each day, I invite you to cultivate grateful hearts. Before your feet hit the floor each morning, thank God for the gift of a new day. It is from grateful hearts that we love each other, take care of each other, and sustain each other in difficult times. It is from grateful hearts that we see and help the poor and those our world would ignore. And it is from grateful hearts that generosity flows. God bless you and those you love this Thanksgiving and always. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God.
Let us pray together. Grant, Lord, to keep us this evening without sin. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our fathers, and praise and glorify is your name forever. Amen. Lord, let your mercy come upon us, for we have trusted in you. Blessed are you, Lord, teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, Master, make me understand your commandments. Blessed are you, Holy One, enlighten me with your commandments. Lord, your love endures forever. Do not turn away from the work of your hands. To you belong praise, song, and glory, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Who are currently serving our country throughout the world, 
that you may grant them a safe return to their families. Let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For the completion of our lives, in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give the glory now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Again. Every year we gather for the Thanksgiving service and every year we invite you to offer from the gifts that you have received to help toward the needs of people within our community through the Orange Fuel Fund. This money is split between two centers uh, as well, between the Spooner House, which is in Shelton, a facility that can house 36 individuals at a time for up to six months, including men's and women's dormitories and two family suites. There is also a cafeteria and laundry facilities and counseling services that are provided. And then the Orange Fuel Bank is administered by Dennis Marsh at the High Plains Community Center. It will help Orange residents in need who fit the financial criteria by providing up to 100 gallons of fuel during the winter season. The fund is donation based and so any contribution that you are willing to offer this night will certainly benefit them. And I think all of us having gone through Hurricane Sandy and the winter storm after that are hoping that that may be the end of our challenges this year, but your contributions will help if there's more storms on their way. But we thank you for giving generously this night.
before we conclude, we ask that you take a moment to pray for peace in a land that God has chosen as his own, but is at war tonight, a place that is hurting. The intervention of people at prayer is one of the most powerful weapons in the world. So pause in silence, please, and ask God's blessing upon his land. Sit nomine domine benedictum, ex hoc nucle, in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Lord, we call your blessing upon the people that you have chosen, upon the land the Abrahamic faiths call home. Bless this place with peace. Let the weapons of war be turned into plowshares. Let hatred be turned into love. And let us all remember that we are brothers and sisters of all in the one family that you have created. We ask this both now and forever. Amen. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Let us go forward this night, giving thanks for the chance to be together May we sense the fellowship that is here, the spirit that is moving through us, one and all. And may God bless us as we go forward into this Thanksgiving week, as we share the meals and give thanks. Amen. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chunecha, Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha. Shalom. Que le Seigneur vous bénisse et vous protège. Que le Seigneur fasse briller sa face sur vous. Qu'il vous accorde sa grâce. Que le Seigneur tourne sa face vers vous et vous donne la paix. Amen. Amen. El Seigneur. Te bendiga y te guarda. El Señor haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y tenga de ti misericordia. El Señor alce sobra ti su rostro y te dé paz. Amén. Te благослови тебя, Господь, и хранит тебя. Да явит тебе Господь светлый лик свой и помилует тебя. Да окружит тебя Господь любовью и дарует тебе и всему человечеству божественный дар мира. Скажем Амен.
Thank you. A thank you especially to my colleagues who you see uh, seated behind me and to my right and to my left. I think that uh, we in the town of Orange are truly blessed by having such wonderful um, and inspirational spiritual leaders in our churches and in our synagogues. So God bless you and thank you so much for joining us today. A thank you as well to uh, the members from all of the different congregations that gathered together in the choir. Those from other communities had to learn Greek in order to participate. <laughs> Not that it was a requirement, but they did a tremendous job. And if you uh, happened to arrive early, you could hear them practicing. I didn't actually hear, it was beautiful. And, and I thank you for your dedication. And of course, our uh, choir director, Stacy Grimaldi, for taking the time and sharing with uh, all of us her talent and the talents of all. So thank you very, very much. As I said in the beginning, it truly is a wonderful opportunity for us to gather during this time of Thanksgiving and pray together as one, um, offering up prayers of Thanksgiving, uh, prayers of appreciation to our Lord, God and Savior, asking him to protect us, asking him, of course, uh, to guide us. And as an opportunity for all of us to be able to um, share in this sense of fellowship and continue, you are all invited downstairs as soon as we finish in a moment uh, to join us in our hall for a wonderful uh, reception of sorts. The food certainly delicious, um, I hope. The <laughs> coffee, I'm sure, warming. Uh, but more importantly than that, the opportunity to share with brothers and sisters, the opportunity to get to know one another uh, a lot better. We've seen um, how important that is, especially during these uh, trying times. And we have seen a return to uh, that simpler way of life of reconnecting without using our cell phones, of reconnecting face to face, of expressing our joy and the pleasantness of being in each other's company. May God bless you, and I wish you all a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. I should mention how to get to the hall. The hall is actually, you would have to go downstairs and continue to proceed in this direction. For those who need assistance or who the stairs may be a little bit difficult, there is an elevator available right outside these doors and there will be council members there uh, able to assist you to go into the elevator. Just keep on heading in that direction. 